Okay, so begins our first attempt at vlogging. Cloud has been transformed from summer cozy live aboard home uh, to winter cold project workshop mode. And the first thing on the list, well actually not the first thing on the list, this has interrupted the list, but when we moved Cloud from downtown Manio up the Roanoke Sound and here into Collington Harbor for the winter, the engine started overheating. But she was still um, discharging raw water. So today I'm gonna to try and diagnose what is happening there. So I'm gonna take apart the heat exchanger, see if there's any broken impeller blades or gunk built up. I've got some barnacle buster I'm gonna run through to clean that out. And hopefully that's the problem. If not, uh, it'll be on to the next thing. First step to servicing a heat exchanger is draining it. So that's what I'll do first. So what I just did was drain the fresh water side of the cooling system. Every engine's different, but if you look in your manufacturer's handbook, there should be a diagram that'll show you where that drain is. So on our Yanmar, it was actually pretty easy access. I had to switch to a smaller bowl because the large one was filling up and tip. I was spilling it when I was trying to pull it out. So that's all drained out. Now I'm gonna move over to the raw water side and just make sure there is no raw water mixed in there that's gonna come out when I take this thing apart. is in the worst spot. Let's see, let's see. Why is this turned around this way? That was very stupid. This hose clamp is in the worst position and I don't know how it got turned this way. Always take this into consideration when installing your hose clamps. Make sure that they are tightened down in a position that it's going to be easy to get back to. I'm also noticing that there's only one hose clamp on this, and this is a spot where raw water is passing through. When this engine is on, if this were to ever become disconnected, that would be a serious issue. That would flood the boat very quickly. So any spot below the water line, especially where raw water is being pumped through, Always double hose clamp. I really do not like the positioning of this. So this is gonna go back on with two hose clamps and secured much more snugly than it is right now. If I can get it off. Okay, I got it. I had to go around from the other side and use a bigger screwdriver. But it actually come off pretty easily. So this hose clamp here was facing away from the access point. So when I reinstall it, I'm gonna have it this way. And that's gonna make things much easier. That is loose now. I really do not like how loose this hose clamp was. That's really, I don't like that at all. So we're gonna do better. Now, I can already feel that this hose is really snug and not gonna wanna come off very easily. So when that happens, a great technique to get a hose off more easily is to grab the heat gun and just heat it up so that that material expands a little bit and then it should pop right off. Down here I'm just gonna take the cover plate off and check the impeller just make sure all the blades are there if not it's very likely we're gonna find them somewhere along the line especially pushed up against the tubes inside the heat exchanger so I'm just gonna take a look right now might as well I'm down here and if it needs to be replaced I can replace it All 
right, the cooling system has been drained. I checked the impeller and all the blades are still on it. The impeller's in good shape, so it, it's nothing to do, I don't think anything to do with the raw water side. So we're gonna take this apart and just take a look inside and see if there's some kind of blockage. end cap of the heat exchanger as you can see here and there was nothing obvious blocking the flow on this end now I could go ahead and take apart the other side and shine a light through and see if I can see anything but even if I do see something the solution is going to be the same as if I can't see something which is going to be to circulate some barnacle buster through the whole system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that instead of taking apart the entire thing and looking through both ends. I just have a sneaking suspicion this is actually just a problem with the thermostat. But since we're here, I wanna go ahead and just descale the engine anyway. So I'm gonna show you my setup. I'm using a product called Barnacle Buster. As per the instructions of Barnacle Buster, you need to circulate it through the engine for an hour and inject it into the lowest point. So I hooked up a hose to the bilge pump, which connects to the raw water intake, which is gonna pump the barnacle buster basically through the same path that the raw water would be coming in. And it's gonna recirculate it through here. I disconnected this from the exhaust. This is normally where it would be discharged, but I took that out and put it right back into the bucket. So it's just gonna be recirculating. I'm hoping there's enough. Uh, I only got one gallon. I'm also hoping that the bilge pump isn't too powerful. It's what I got as our emergency bilge pump. I haven't hooked it up yet, but it's 1100 gallons per hour, which is a lot. So I'm gonna basically just jerry-rig these wires to the battery and we're gonna see what happens. I really don't know what to expect here. Since this is gonna be running for about an hour, I'm gonna go ahead and just make these connections up um, I don't really want to jerry-rig this, so I've gone ahead and put in a 5 amp fuse, which is what the bilge pump calls for, into a fuse block over here, and I'm just going to rig this up a little bit more properly than a jerry-rig, since it is going to be running for an hour, and then I can just keep the spare wires as my dedicated descaling electrical kit somewhere, so that next time, I'd like to get in the habit of doing this once a year, and then next time I can actually just wire this right back up easily and connect it right back up to the fuse block. So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, the negative side is finished. The other benefit of putting it on the fuse block is that the fuse block is actually switched at the panel. So I can control turning this pump on and off at the DC panel. So I'm gonna wire this in, make sure the panel's off and then flip the switch and see how this stuff circulates. I have no idea what to expect. I'm really hoping this goes well. So here we have the bilge pump outlet running to the lowest point of the raw water system with a pretty cheap hose I got from Lowe's. A little bit jerry-rigged on the connection there, but the fittings were weird. That is running to, that's gonna run through the engine discharge through this hose and back into the bucket and as i mentioned i've just got it wired to this uh, fuse block which i can control from the dc electrical panel right here is the aft fuse block so if i did this right when i flip this switch that should start circulating so i'm nervous what's gonna happen i'm flipping the switch now <laughs> Okay, it seems to be working. I just readjusted the bucket so that the, the level of the barnacle buster wasn't so uneven. And this is it. This is going to circulate through the engine for the next hour. Doesn't seem to be leaking from my jury rig. My alarm just went off, which means it's time to end it. Cool. Now the last and final step with Barnacle Buster is a freshwater flush. I'm just using water from the sink. And we'll run that through for a few minutes and we should be good. Let's do it. 
The engine has been flushed with fresh water for a few minutes and now all that's left to do is put everything back together. So I'm going to reconnect all the hoses. I do want to double hose clamp that one that only had one hose clamp on it. Again, that's because it was below the water line and having pressurized raw water passing through it. So you don't want that coming disconnected. I don't want that coming disconnected. Um, and also we want to refill the heat exchanger with coolant. There's still a little bit in the reservoir. But the whole heat exchanger is empty because we drained it. And as tempting as it may be to reuse the old coolant, I'm going to top it off with new coolant because technically the old coolant will still cool the engine. But a lot of these newer ones have um, built-in corrosion and rust inhibitors, which those do wear out over time. So I'm going to get in the habit of just replacing this once a year. Everything I just did, I'm going to try and do once a year. Maybe that's overkill, but... I don't see any drawback to descaling and just keeping things from growing in here, especially the water that we keep the boat in. It's really warm. We have barnacles growing all over the place. So I would prefer to keep things free of growth. All right, as you can see, I'm back home. I left Cloud that evening. I actually ran out of coolant when I was refilling the heat exchanger, so I wasn't able to fire her up to see if the alarm was still in fact going off. So I had to put that one on pause, and I was also waiting for this to come in, an infrared thermometer. So that's gonna be the next step is getting an actual temperature reading and seeing if it is just a sensor or sender issue. And also let me know if I'm doing something wrong or should be doing something differently in my engine diagnosis of the temp alarm going off. We want this to be a platform that is a place of learning for us as well. So we're gonna leave this one here and let us know what you thought. Um, this is our first attempt. Let us know in the comments. We, This is a new journey for us and we really want to know what everyone thinks about our little endeavor here. There's no shortage of sailing vlogs on the internet, so hopefully we can find a space in which to insert ours that is a little bit different. If you did in fact like it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. As I'm sure you've heard, that's that's super helpful for us and very encouraging. This, like I, like I said, this is new for us and we're pretty stoked to see what might become of all this, so let us know what you think.